<laughs> so one, one of the gifts that I've received this morning mm. is an iPhone 15. Oh, is it? Yeah. From where? Yeah. Is it which, which one is I want to? Why? From where? It's a problem as <laughs> So a big thank you to my loved ones who have started bringing in the gift. I appreciate the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Who brought it is the world we, we, where which we Which one did you own? Hmm? Bring yours. Uh -huh. Bring yours. Bring the iPhone. It's none of your business. Why should it be our business? <laughs> We are still accepting the moments and their games. But it's time mm. for us to celebrate women who are doing phenomenal in the world of business. It's never easy being a woman. You know, we always say that we have so many hurdles ahead of us. You have to be a wife. You have to be a mother. You are doing everything, putting everything together. And on top of it all, you're trying to make money. Take a look at this video. Augustina Anoa is the creative force and entrepreneur behind Anoa's Big House, a distinguished destination for artisanal cakes and confections. Her passion for baking extends beyond the ordinary, emphasizing creativity, quality, and a commitment to empowering women through entrepreneurship. Anoa not only showcases culinary expertise, but also dedicates herself to fostering women entrepreneurship, serving as a testament to breaking barriers in traditionally male-dominated industries. Anoa's Big House is more than a bakery. It's an inspiration hub for aspiring women entrepreneurs, symbolizing culinary excellence and the strength of women in business. Anoa actively collaborates with local initiatives advocating for women empowerment and challenging stereotypes. Her story reflects passion, perseverance, and a belief in women's ability to excel in any industry. Through Anoa's Big House, she crafts not just cakes, but a narrative of empowerment, one delectable treat at a time. Yeah, that's our guest for today, and she's already seated, very excited watching herself, you know, and all the beautiful things she's been able to do and achieve. She's an award-winning, uh, you know, as Baker, well. yeah. Oh, but... Augustina Anua is our guest for Women in Business. Hello, darling. Hello. You look beautiful. Are you happy for our bed, though, or are you happy for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> She's happy that it's my birthday, yeah. and I'm happy that I have Anwar here. Yeah. Okay, so it's yeah. both, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited because, hey, you're meeting, like, you know, a baker on your birthday. Do you know what it means? Like, yeah. do you know what means it means? That, yeah, we, have, we have business ahead of us. I yeah. tell you. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. Anwar, how are you? I'm fine. It's good to have you here. Good time. And um, feel free, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Don't worry yourself, crap. Feel free. See the way KMJ and I are vibing. Be vibing with us like that. Like we are in the house, we are chatting and all of that. You know. That's right. Yeah. Oh, be fine. yeah. But how long have you been doing the baking? I think two years, some months now. Oh wow. Two years and some months. Okay. What got you into it? Okay, so <clears throat> I've always believed in something. Um, starting something on my own. And I've always been selling, buying, selling into it. So I think somewhere last two years, I saw an opportunity with the baking industry. So I decided to educate myself in that field. Mm. And here we are today. Mm. Oh, so you didn't get it to work when you felt it was something that there was an opportunity for you to, but you still had to educate yourself? Okay, so um, I've always wanted to do business, but I didn't know which one. Okay. So I'm always selling different things. Okay. But I am also someone that I'm good at organizing programs for people. So sometimes even in my office, when people have their birthday, they'll call me, Anwar, this is the budget. You are looking at this number of people. Mm. Can you put something together and I'll do the magic? <clears throat> Sorry. So it got a time. I decided to pick up one of the things that I use for the celebrations. 
and I decided to go in for cake. For the cake. Yes, yes. But I wanted to as in, use this for business, so I needed to train myself in that. Okay. So I enrolled myself in a baking school. Oh, yes, then. I see. I was asking because some people would want to learn on the job. Yeah. So it means they'll go and learn from someone. Mm -hmm. No, on the job. So it mm -hmm. means more, more like an employed. Yeah. And then throughout that period, the person will be able to learn it. But you decided that let me just go straight to the school. Yeah. So it was something that you had made yeah. your mind. Yeah. Uh, I see. Interesting. That's fantastic. Now let me ask you first. Before you started, you said you work in an office. Yes. So what, what do you do? I work at the airport. Hey! That place, oh, I hear the way they, 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 they share. Yeah. Oh, so you're doing that. Bacon is a side gig for me. Oh. A side yeah. business. Is it true that airport, you guys get a lot of dollars? <laughs> like as tips. Yeah. As tips. Is it true? After, after. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do that. Anwar, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Anwar? Hmm, where do I even start from? Anywhere, whatever. <laughs> just start anywhere. Okay, so my life, I've not had um, a smooth journey growing up. I was once a street child. Really? Yeah, yes. Street child, how? It's a very long story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, we are here for you. You, okay. you, you had your parents and you did decide that I want to be on the street or your parents were not there for you? Okay, so, so I grew up with my mom without knowing who my father was. Okay. So I think I got to meet my father two weeks my 25th birthday. That's mm -hmm. when I got to. Yes, but the situation around house got me onto the streets, I think around 15 or 16. The single parenting period? Yeah. Okay. So my mother was in the village. I'd come to stay with my auntie, but things didn't go out well. And I also wasn't ready to go to the village because I was from a family that sex siblings. Nobody has been educated to the, even I think as at the time, no SHS. So I'd wanted to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. And I realized my mother was, in, was not in the position to do that for me. So when I came to Accra to stay with my auntie and things didn't work out, I had the option to go back to the village or stay Which on my own. Um, there's a place at um, Central Region, Bedukrum, around Mankesin. Oh. Okay, I know that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, after GHS, there was this woman that lived in our house. Yes, she was selling sugar cane, so she enrolled me into it. And we, we started selling sugar cane. So out of the sugar cane, I was able to gather money, put myself to school. So I did Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, going to Form 4. And I realized that every vacation I would come and sell, but it got it. As you go higher, the vacation days reduces. Yes, yes. So now you don't have enough time to sell to get the money you want because I'm paying school fees and I'm also buying provisions for myself. So I think somewhere from 3, 3 time, I met Mama Rita, Royal House Chapel, who decided to put me on Royal House Scholarship. Oh. Yes, so they helped me. And during university, too, I was paying half. So I'll come and sell sugar cane, pay half to the church, and the church would pay the rest. And Mama Rita would always give me provision and all that. So I, I did that. So even my final year, I'd always come from university and come and sell sugar cane. Let, 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 let me ask you first, when you were selling the sugar cane, before you met Mama Rita, you said you were with your auntie, but... I'd moved, yes, from my auntie's place. So when you moved, where were you staying? Okay, so um, this is what happened. I think when I was staying with my auntie, it got her time, school fees became a problem, so she wanted my mother to pay the school fees. Okay. And my mother didn't understand why she should do that, because I'm serving them. Mm -hmm. And my mother didn't approach the situation where she came to her car, went to my auntie's husband's office to fight with him. So I think <laughs> things became sad, and I was injected from the house, so I was asked to move. Okay. And as at that time, I was in, I think I was left a three months to complete, um, write BC. Mm -hmm. And my mother came. And as, I didn't know how I, I could, I would go back to the village. And any school would take me in three months to write in BC. Mm -hmm. So I told my mother that we should go to my school. Perhaps maybe my, my headmaster will write a letter or something. That when I take it to the village, they would accept me from three okay. to write. We went and my headmaster said, because I'm the head girl, as I said, I was the head girl. She wouldn't, um, he wouldn't want the head girl not to complete school. So because of that, um, he agreed to take me in for the three months. Okay. After the time we were discussing, there was this nursery um, madam who was also there. And according to her, since I became the head girl, I, would, um, I always made sure that the children had water to drink. So when I was the head girl, when you come to school, it, we divide into two. Some will fetch water for the energy. They had a bucket, a barrel, 
with plenty caps. So a, a, group, a group of section will go and wash it, whilst the others will go and fetch water. I never knew she liked it. She mm -hmm. never told me anything. Until the day we went, they said, oh, since I, I became the head, I always think about the kids. So because them, she would also want to take me in. Oh, so even became oh, a fight who to stay, yes. So she took me in. Wow. And yes. So where we went, um, she was um, staying at Ablekuma. The house too, I think they had, it was a compound house. So the sweeping was one week, one week. And there was this woman who was never at home. And whenever it was her turn to sweep, the place was always so The people there were always fighting with her. When, when I went in, I would wake up in the morning to sweep. So I got a time, the roaster wasn't working again. And the lady noticed that now they don't fight her. So she inquired about it. They said, oh, Madam Nautiano, or the Aqualabia Banton Noye. Then she came to have a conversation with me that, oh, um, she heard I'm here now and I've been doing the sweeping and all that. Um, will I be here for long? And I said, oh, I have just three months after I'll go to the village. And he said, oh, she saw sugar cane. At, um, okay, so that's how the sugar cane part Yes, came, so yeah. if I complete school and I'm going to the village without going to do anything, she, she wouldn't mind taking me on wow. to help herself. So we came to Kaneshi. I completed school on Friday. We started sugar cane on Saturday. That day, I went five rounds, and it has never happened in that time before. A day that the most you can do is two, two rounds, like the pan. And I went five the first day. So they were amazed how I could quickly sell. Mm -hmm. So um, the following week, I went about 12 to 1, I was done. They said, hey, it doesn't happen like that, too. You have to roam across the whole day. Like, you close to six. How can you? close around this time. So I think people started taking notice of me. So the one who goes to Takrade mm -hmm. to go and bring the sugar cane, I think was told about me. Yeah. And she called me and said, oh, she's, she said that I have a good luck. And whenever I go, I sell on time. And what do I want to become? Because I'm a very pretty girl. I can't sell the sugar mm -hmm. cane for the rest of my And I said, oh, in my family, nobody has been to school to the highest level. I want to be the first, but there's no, wow. there's no money. And I don't know who my father too is. My mother too is in the village doing petty trading. Sometimes you have to even send her before. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's a good initiative. But if I want to sell for somebody on commission, I won't be able to save a lot. So she wouldn't mind. Whenever she go to the farm to bring the um, sugar cane, she will give me on credit to sell. Then after I'll pay her. So I should negotiate with the woman who brought me mm -hmm. that because of my vision of where I want to be in life, she should give me that opportunity to sell for myself so that I wouldn't be taken on commission. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, they said it has never happened before. And somebody brings you, you will serve the person so you are ready to go back mm -hmm. to your village. But funny enough, when I spoke to the woman, she agreed to allow me to be my own boss. So after selling for one week, I was on my own. I was my own. That's like you're not selling at all. I know. Yeah, so now I'm selling for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't do account to anybody. So after the whole week, I calculate my the money I got, pay the one who bought the sugar cane, and the rest is mine. So that is how come I was able to. Do, do you remember how much money you were making? Yes. Then? How much around that time, I was getting 400 CDs a week. Now I think it's 40 CDs. Yes, 40. Now and it was a big money. Yeah. yeah that's so by the time my results, yeah. I think I've gathered 15,000 around that time. Yeah. Now thousand five. Oh. And my education, everything was 700 cities. So I was even left with 800. And there was this woman at um, Abu Sokai who does, I was selling at Abu Sokai. Okay. So um, they do the susu. So they have some small books. So every week, Monday, I'll go and do account to her and she record every amount. Mm -hmm. So it was through her that I was able to save. And amazingly, something happened. Mm -hmm. I think the first day that I came to sell the sugar cane with the lady, I was expecting after everything, we'll go to a room and go and sleep. Ah, I realized this woman was going to bring fridge box. She came, on the main compound, she came to put it down and brought one small cloth. She said that she can't even sleep. I said that we are poor, but I've never slept outside before. He said, oh, the reason why she doesn't come home is that um, from Kaneshi to Ablikuma, that's, as at that time, they hadn't constructed the mm -hmm. road, so there was a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she can't rent two places since she has rented, yeah. yes. Yeah. So she sleeps outside. And apparently, all the people that sell sugar cane, they are yeah. from different places, they are also sleeping out. And whilst I was complaining, negotiating, some people are already snoring. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to sleep on a cardboard? How long did you sleep on the cardboard for? So for about three years. Huh? Oh. 
for about three years. Before somebody moved from there, we, um, it was a com as in self com. So they, and they can accommodate it, all of you. So, so, so the, it was a self-contained. The landlady has given the rooms inside out to different tenants. And she has rented the compound to the sugarcane sellers. So, that so even was, that you're paying for? Yes. So our leader, the one who, got, who, who goes to bring the sugarcane, was paying for the compound for we, the workers. And I woke up in the morning. I was shivering. The dew. I was wet. I'm like, hey. She said I should pick my... All my the dress, pomade, everything. We are going to bath. We went to public bathhouse. When you go, you have to wash whatever you are wearing and dress there. When you come there, you come and um, dry your thing on the, your sugar candy. So sugar, everybody has their own. So you dry your, you as in you dry it on it, or sometimes on the, the on the wall. Sometimes it falls into the gutter. So on your sugar cane. So you put the pants first, your towel, sponge, then your dress on it. By the time you come back from it's your... Dry. Yeah, it's dry, then you pick. So I was doing public toilet, public bathroom, everything for like 10, almost 9 to 10 years. So it got to a time, I think someone moved from the house, so there was one um, empty room, and the landlady decided that those of us sleeping in the, on the compound, if you want the room, we can come in, but we'll pay on individual fees. So I think the first one was seven CDs every month. Then she increased it to 10 CDs. So every month, everybody was paying. So most of us moved our things to the room. And because of that, the, the space left was very small. There was no light there. I think there was no light there and no fun too. And how old were you? As at the time I went to the show, I was 15, 16. I was there to 25. No. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. You, we, we hear stories about the streets that, you know, they are rapists on the streets and all of that. Is, is this true? It's true, but I never experienced one because even though I was sleeping on the compound, it was a self-contained, so there was gates. Okay, okay. It's mine, I was fortunate, so there was gates. Okay. And the saddest moment on the street was when it rains. Mm. As at the time, we hadn't got in the room when it rains. There's no place. You have to come outside. The stores in front of the houses. You 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 put your um, your card and sleep on it. And if you know Kaneshi, when it rains like 30 to 40 to one hour, the place is flooded already. So the first time I think I overslept. By the time I woke up, I was soaked with gutter water. Oh. The gutters are choked in Kaneshi. So little rain, then you have. I was smelling, ah. I didn't know that. Someone told me, say, eh, you're so tired and that one thing for your son. That. So whilst you're sleeping, you should be alert that, oh, the rains can come. So sometimes when you rain, you have to stand so the rain is over. To go and look for a shop that's there. You see some shop have this canopy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you look at those shops, then you Where's sleep there. there. By the time you, so as I, when I was sleeping on this, every day, I, my body looks, Rushes. Yeah, the rashes because of mosquito bites. Was there a point you felt like you want to go back? <sighs> I never you felt like you, you knew you were going to suffer, but not the way you go. You go. In. I never felt like going back. I felt like ending it. And then what? Like I felt it was suicide. Yeah. You commit. You, yes, you attempted I, I felt suicide. like I was too young to go through all those things. And in the village, there was nothing there. My mother didn't have a farm. She was doing this. <clears throat> Sorry, petty trading, and there wasn't there was much. No hope yeah, there was no going hope. back, and I didn't even know who my father too was. All my siblings had fathers. So you wanted to end it. Yes. Did you try it? I didn't. And I think that that was the point I met Mama Rita. That was the point, because it was the time I, I think I was tired. So how did you meet her? Okay, so there was this customer. Before of mine. you continue, we want you to join us on Facebook. So if you haven't tuned in yet, we are on Facebook. The name on there is Joy Prime. Okay, Joy Prime TV, right? Yeah, Joy any Prime. of them can. So can yes, can please too. go on there. We are streaming live. Leave your comments there. Uh, Augustina Anwa is sharing her story. Quite an emotional story because you ask yourself for somebody who has been through so much and she is where she is today very inspirational very very touching i know she's holding back the tears i see it 
I see it. I, I see you holding back the tears. Um, but God has been good. And, yeah, and, and uh, you've done so well for yourself. So you were telling us how you met Mama Rita. Okay, so there was this customer. After that time, I was, in, I was in attending church. Yes, because I work Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, you would um, shine your silver, the one we used to, mm. the pan, yes. And look for some of the sh shops that have sheets so that you can rest. So on Sundays, you can't sleep on the compound because of the direct sunshine. So you have to, the shops, most of the shops don't open. So sometimes you can sleep or you wait for a shade to come. See, sometimes when the, when, when, um, during the day, that even though there's no um, shade in the house, some way, some other, the building itself gives shade so okay. you can go and sleep at the corner. The shadow prevents yes. the sun from. Yeah. So. I wasn't attending any child. There was this particular customer of mine who always buy a lot of sugar cane, but she doesn't buy and give you money. She always buys on credit. So she'll buy today, she won't pay. She'll pay yesterday soon. Then it was like that. So days that I have market, I don't pass there. Days that the market is rough, then I'll go there. So one time she had a conversation with me and she said, oh, which church do I attend? I said, well, I don't attend any church. And she says, she attend Royal House. So I should, I should one day come so that we go every day tomorrow today, tomorrow. every day I was just tossing time. One time I got there and she said, oh, if I don't come this Sunday, she won't buy for me again. I said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that Sunday, just to please her, I decided to follow her. And I realized the oh, Royal House Choir is just closed. Yeah. I can't even walk. <clears throat> Sorry. So that's okay. that Sunday, I went with her. And the first day I got there, they preached about apprenticeship. If you want to become great, you have to be a servant. I was touched. And after, the picture um, lady said, if you want to become an apprentice, come forward. Then I went forward. They laid hand on her as and I said, after they said, from now going, we are ushers. I'm like, hey, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's because of my customer. <laughs> ushers, I say. <laughs> I can't be an usher. So the woman said, our ushering job starts right after church. <laughs> hey. <laughs> And you see, warehouse. If you know, warehouse is like a DB church. Yeah. So that day, they asked her to pack the church. And the woman, I, I think she could see the way I'm carrying the church, the ch plenty place. She realized, oh, I'll be a good yeah, tool yeah. for her. <laughs> 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 so, so, so I think she spotted. She said, oh. She took my number that every Saturday they do cleaning, so I should come. We <laughs> I was sweeping around and picking. I wasn't mind picking with my hands and yeah. all that. So. And that is something people will know. Mm -hmm. She realized, no, this lady, I need her, I need her, my see. <laughs> so she took my number. That Saturday, she called me. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm selling. She said, oh, no problem. I should finish everything. Then after, I would come soon. I went afterwards. Then I started clean, helping her to clean. And so she took interest in my case. And every day, she would encourage me to come to church and all of that. So through that, I think they had... Um, youth program called WMG, World Movers Generation. So it's a camp that they used to attend at Legon. Every year, they, so that, that time, I think the first year I, I attended the church, I didn't join the camp, it was the following year. And they were sharing testimony of how people's lives were transformed, how people went to the camp and they were never the same again. As at that time, I was in third year and twenty fourth year. I did four years in SHS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So I said, oh, if that's the case, then I would want to attend the camp some because I also want a turn around because I'm suffering too much. Mm. And around that time, I was depressed because anytime I come, if I come to the, the following day, and sometimes you see your colleagues too on the, on the street, even though I'll give them some of the sugar cane, they will chew, but when they go to school, they will go and tell people that I saw sugar cane. And it got a time. I, I didn't feel belong in school because they felt. <laughs> it's not really cool when you are in school and people know what you do at home. And so, mm. Yes. So I think I was in cool with it. Yeah. So you didn't want to go to school again? You wanted to quit school because of that? I think I, I, after that time, I, I, was, I was feeling suicidal. I just wanted to end it because I didn't see any hope. There was no hope. I never for one day thought I would become, something would even come out of me. I thought my life would end on the street. And when I was on the street, and 
because nobody has been to SHS, the aim was to be uh, to be able to go to, to SHS complete. so and maybe after marriage. But it wasn't even easy with the SHS. So I went to the camp and there were um, there was this lady who came to share testimony that oh she used to have dreams every year and the dreams were same. So every year she would have the same dream. And she had a friend in her house. The friend would always invite her to church, but she wouldn't come. But that particular camp, the friend came to her house to pick her things and brought to the camp with her. And her mother said she left her on Thursday morning to the camp, Friday night to Saturday. The mother said she heard a very loud sound in her room. And when she went, her ceiling fan has come down and divided her mattress into two. So it means that when she didn't, she, if she, if she was there. If she was there, she would have been there. killed. And there was this dream I also used to have every year. So I didn't understand mine. So I think after church, I wanted to go and talk to my pastor about it. But I realized oh, it wasn't like that. You have to, I think, see the people around him for them to... Anything. Thank you. For them to give you permission and all that. So they, I was directed to go and see Mama Rita. Then I spoke to her about the dream. She said, oh, it's no good. After that time, we were asked to come and do stay in. So they had given us two weeks. And I sold Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and gathered the money. So that was the money I used to register for the camp. And because I was an usher, we were asked to buy Royal House T-shirts. So I used some of the money for the T-shirt. Yes. So I was left with just one week to come and sell and go back to school because we are going to do stay in. I don't know if your time they were doing when you're in, getting to final year vacation, you don't spend everything at home. Yeah. There are times you have to. So I was left just one week after telling my mother my story. She said she would assign me to a pastor who would pray with me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I said, it, will it be an evening something? He said, oh no, day from like eight. And I said, oh no, it can't be possible. He said, tell your mother it is important. And I said, I don't stay with my mother. He said, tell your auntie. I said, I do. He said, so who do you stay with? I said, alone. He said, how? And I narrated my story. She was in tears and she hugged me. And that day I felt like I was also a human being. Mm -hmm. Like I've never felt that way. Nobody again. had hugged you before? Mm -hmm. Nobody. So she said, I should, I should attend the um, prayer meeting after she would ask them to bring me home. So, and according to her, she had even. Um, decided that she was going to inquire about me after the camp because she realized I was one of the ushers that always stay behind, make sure the whole auditorium is clean. And that she would always see me sweeping everywhere, arranging chairs. So she has even taken notice of me. So after the camp, she was going to inquire who am I mm -hmm. about me. And said, oh. So she said, then I should come. I should come to her house after the prayers. After the prayer, I was taken to her house. She served me on dining table. First time. <laughs> First time. <laughs> that I was sitting on dining table. I was so happy that someone has at least recognized that I'm a human being. And after she asked someone to bring some dude back, one, the person brought another one. So I thought maybe the first one. The person played the um, first one by my side and the second one at the other side. So after she said, oh, this is my provision. I was so excited. So the other one, she spat. I said, hey. <laughs> When I went to open, he said, and after she gave me an envelope that I should take to school to, for the staying. After um, vacation, I should come and bring my school fees to them. She was going to put me on Royal House Scholarship and all that. It's like, wow, this is God. I went to uh, conflicts, holics, with bit. Some of the things I have to ask my friends how to eat them and how to eat bread them, but I didn't even see before. I would only go to school with shit or mm. they need to cry. I buy the one that they use margarine. Because you were living alone. Yes. I use the one that they use the margarine to fetch for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. I'll buy a bottle, they will put it inside. For so, what secondary school did you attend? St. Paul Senior High. Okay. At school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, after my essay, um, after um, writing Wasi, I didn't get, um, I, I, I didn't get, you see, university, they have regular students where government pays some of your fees. We have fee paying. Yeah, fee paying. That, in tech, there's a middle one, parallel students, those okay. ones. The fees is not as low as the regular. It's not as high as the, um, the, um, the fee paying. But yours is a bit expensive. Mm -hmm. than, and according to my writer, you see, there are a lot of people on warehouse scholarship. So since I didn't get to regular, I would have to look for either 
go back to SHS again or to apply again or some, wait for the following year. I told myself, no. So I went back to the street. I was selling. Then I came to tell her that I can raise half of the school fees. Is it possible she can top up? She said, OK. Wow. And she agreed. So you were very determined then. <laughs> yes, I went back. To... You need to finish yeah. that. When I, when I entered Royal House, it gave me a different perception that um, being in SHS graduate it shouldn't be the standard. Because in Royal House, most small children, the English they could speak. <laughs> yeah. After that, I couldn't even express myself. Or there are certain words I couldn't mention. So because of that, I, I didn't, I didn't feel yourself. fit in. Mm -hmm. Yes, but those, I didn't let those ones to as in break me. I saw, I saw, I, I saw that as as inspiration for me to as in challenge myself. To yes, to better myself. So she agreed to pay, and every vacation I would come and sell, take my half to them. They never, and the church also pay. She would give me provisions, then I'll go. So school. I was executive throughout because I realized, oh, when you enter into politics on campus, at least they give you accommodation. And I've been a leader throughout my um, the other side. Yes. So it was easy. So for it you was too. easy for me. So I became an executive at Africa Hall. I was a welfare chair, and I became the judicial chairperson. So because of that, I wasn't paying for whole fee. And that was a bonus to me. <laughs> <laughs> on campus, I would do sausage, kebab. So, blue and so, so it started from the, the marketing and the marketing. The they started when I was younger. My yeah. mother was a petit trader, so you sell cacao, tomatoes, bread, like everything my mother finds, you go and sell. And my mother, I was my mother's favorite at, at that time mm. because whenever she put anything on my head, I would go and sell. sell. My other sisters would go, they wouldn't be able to make sales. But when I go, so I realized there's something about yeah. business that I needed to do. So after mm. uni, even though I was working at the airport, Airport, they do shifts, so you have some off days. I thought, why? I said, why? I just come home and sleep with my off days. I can do something. So I decided to enroll myself in the baking school. Let me ask you first. We, let's take it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Your mother, when you went to secondary school, did she know you had enrolled yourself in secondary no. school? I thought, um, I, she didn't even have phone. So, so you never went back to rich. her to mm. tell her anything as well. So what about, happened to your siblings too? They were in the village? Some of them were staying with their... Um, so they had um, fathers, so okay, okay. they were staying, yes. Okay, okay, okay. And because I didn't have father, I didn't know where to go. About so when did village. you go back to your mother? To let her know after where After uni. Wow. wow. After uni. And she was so happy. That was, that was some time. Yeah. So that was, what, 10 years? Mm. No, more than 10. More than 10. How many years? I had already struggled for 10 with the up and downs and all that. The a whole up and down thing mm. is 9 to 10 years. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it was after everything that I went. Mm. How did she feel when she... She was so happy. Hey, they said she went to give testimony now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think two weeks to my um, 25th birthday, um, I think one time, I think one month to my... Uh, a ma few months to my 25th birthday, we had gone to visit this uncle of mine who is late now. And he had come from abroad. He said he doesn't know any of my mother's um, children. He has met all my siblings and I was the only one. As at the time he came, I was in school. So my sister took me there and he asked me, what's your name? I said, I know Augustina. And he said, ah, I know Augustina. Wait, before I go to my uncle's home, the saddest moment in my growing up as a child in school, was this that you move from one class to the other. Maybe you're in class four, you're going to class five. You always have new teachers. So when they come, the first thing they do is they introduce themselves to you and they ask you to introduce to the whole class. So you mention your name, you said I mention your name. It gets to me and I mention Anu Augustine and they ask you, say name. I said Anu Augustine. Anu is not say name. Then they would ask you, your father's name. I didn't know my father's name. And so then the, the whole class gets to know you are Where you're coming from here. So that alone is intimidating enough. So you then not strike a fight with anyone. No, you think, against ah. you. The thing, and it was, they didn't know those things were hurting me. Like they made us in my identity very known to people right on those. So if, even before the class begin, people know who you are. That you're a bastard. And after that, I don't know whether they've heard that word for the first time. So everywhere you go, like you dare not strike a fight. The, the insult is you're a bastard. Wow. Yeah. And those things 
were also like, <laughs> I didn't even but know the that. turnaround has been great. Yeah, the turnaround. I mean, if you look at what God has been able to do from that period to where yeah. you are right now, when you look back, yeah. you know, does it it's motivate it. you it's enough worth it. to yeah. even do what you're doing right oh, now? I want to even do. I want to be an inspiration to, especially those on the street workers, mm. to let them know that um, that's you can be on the street today, but that is not your final destination. Mm. You can aspire to become whoever you want to be. Everything is possible. Wow. If you're on the street today, you shouldn't give up. Mm. So let me take you back to where I met my uncle. So my uncle, I mentioned my name and he said, ah, your father's name. I said, I don't know. He said, ah, and your mother is alive and you don't know your father. You are not curious about it. I said, whenever I ask my mother, she will cry. She won't say anything. Then my, um, I went with one of my sisters. So my uncle asked, and to also to one of my own name, Papa Anna. And my sister said, oh, yeah, call her no. One time, Papa be fired with Fiebi or Nyameche. I was born at Nyameche. If only they've not done a renovation at the area, she can identify the house. So when she said that, I was quiet. I'm like, okay. Sunday after church, I went to a house that we should go to Nyameche. We went to room the entire space, and funny enough, we found the house. But according to the people in the area, it was a Muslim woman who lived in that apartment. But she mostly goes to somewhere that they do not know. She will come like once in a month, once in three months. You hardly see her around. I'm like, okay, once I know the house, it's fine for me. So every day I'll go and check. Every day I'll go and check. Every day I'll go and check. So one, so for, for at, at a point, I thought I was a Muslim because they told me the one week. And looking at my stature too, I felt like, hey, then my father could be a Muslim. <laughs> so. One time I went and there was light in the house. I'm like, hey, the woman is back. I was knocking, she wasn't here. I went to pick two. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> she came out so furious that I wanted to break her. And I said, I've knocked, sir. Huh? I said, what is it? I didn't know even where to start. And I said, I'm looking for someone. According to my mother, he's Francis. 25 years ago, they said he was living in this house. I said, ah, 25 years, you come to ask me. I came to this house like 14 or 15 years. How do I know what happened? My husband bought it for me. Then she, she, she was standing there. He said, oh, there was this um, gate man we had. He's now on retirement. He's still alive. He has been here since then. So I think he will know who. He said Francis. I said, I don't know his name. And God says, my mother gave me just his first name. I couldn't even look for him. Where do you go asking you that you're looking for Francis? Francis yeah. yeah. So then. Um, the woman told me to um, go and come back the flame because she would spend the whole week there. I said, okay. The flame there came. She said, oh, she had gotten in touch with the gate man that used to stay there. And the gate man said, he knows my father. And I said, oh, wow, great. Is he alive? They said, yes. Okay. So now this woman should give me the contact. It has become a problem. Hey, she wants to be the one to unite us. Mm -hmm. And according to the woman, when um, the gate man, um, he asked, she asked the gate man. The gate man also gave her a certain man's number, according to the gate man. That is my father's boss. So, and my father's boss also wanted to be the one to unite us. So, the woman would, wouldn't give me the other man, the man who can lead me to my father. And the other man also wants the woman to direct me to him, him. so that he would do that. Mm. Hey. Hmm. So how okay. did you finally meet him? So the, the, finally, I think one time I went to the woman, I told her that I've been transferred to the northern region to go and do my service. So I thanked her for things she hadn't done. So I said, oh, thank you that because of you, I nearly met my father. And now I even know that my father is alive and that alone is enough. So I, I was praising of things she hasn't done. So when I was going, she said I should come there. She gave me the other man who has my father's number that I should call them. So the man arranged for a meeting. And, I met my father for the first time. Wow. Then I realized I had other siblings, three other siblings from his side. Yes, so now, you know, you are nine. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Now let's talk about you and your baking prowess. <laughs> Which I, I, I saw, I saw uh, the cake that I saw is a building it's or a castle or, or something. <laughs> castle cake. Now, so how, you Last said you've been house. doing it for the past two and a half years. Yes. Wow. Two and few months, two years and few months. Two years and few months. Yeah. How is it going so far? Oh, so far, I don't have a shop though. Mm. So now I'm doing this in the house. Okay. So we have my husband and I. We have two bedroom apartment, and I'm using one mm. for that. But I'm looking forward to even establishing a school where I can also train people 
not people who are only interested in baking, but street children, especially hawkers who want to do something with their hands. I want to discount it for them, okay. where they can also learn something for themselves. The street, you can't be there forever. Yeah. And most people that I was on the street with, most people are not really educated. So maybe they are not aspiring to be working in any office, but they can do things with their hands. Mm. So if I'm able to establish the school, <coughs> I'll be able to help them. Yes. That's okay. fantastic. I'm looking at the building. I don't know why. Who, who, who did you build this for? Okay, so this castle cake was a master class that I just enrolled in. Ah. So I went to learn how to build a castle cake. Oh, wow. Recently. Wow. Some, I think last year, December or November, they about. Oh, you should build one for I think that's what I want for my birthday. <laughs> a house. Yeah, yes, a house. So, so what goes into this? Um, <laughs> As other people who tell you what they want, and if they do, do you make some inputs? Or okay, so this is you? okay. So this one, um, you use PVC board. It's a structure. Okay. You build it on it. So the cake will be inside. Then you build the structure on it. Oh, yeah. right. And you do that yourself. That's something I'm going to learn you. So I'm hoping to oh. get further. So maybe. Wow. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, business, yeah. <laughs> so what what are the types of cakes that you make? Okay, so I do wedding cake, birthday cake, pastries. Okay. So uh, I hear wedding cake, you add uh, alcohol and all of that to it, right? Oh, this, these this, days you don't. No, this, these days. Okay. Those are the old things. You see olden days say, mm -hmm. when you get married, it is believed that you have to keep one of the cake for a whole oh, year. Yeah, for that so because of that, you have to use alcohol just for that longer preservation. Yeah. I don't know, so you made this cake? Yes, please. I think that's what this I want for my birthday cake. Yeah. Yeah. This is also very beautiful. Yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, how long does it take for you to make a cake like this? Two, three days. Wow. You just put it there, you've been doing it small, small, small. <laughs> that's a lot of work. <laughs> I hear it's very lucrative, is it true? Yes. Hey! Yes, so there's money in it. There's money in it, eh? So People much. order a lot? Now, because I don't have a shop, it mm. is basically my contact and few people from online. But you see, if you have a shop, anybody passing by will, will get to know. Okay. But because you are doing it in your in your house, nobody gets to know about mm. what you do. But social Except media is working, right? Um, not really. Is it? Mm. Are people say they make a lot of money from social media? The orders from social media is uh, the orders from my contact is more than. But it's from social media oh. for now. Oh. Maybe it will pick. You see everybody in their season. Yeah. So I think mine will pick, pick later. Up. Yeah. Because yeah. two, 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 two years and a few months, you are doing amazing. Thank so what, what what do you call a fondant cake or butter fondant, cake? Or, there there there's a fondant, fondant cake. Yeah. Okay. So there are types. There's a fondant. There's yes. what? Crepe cream. Crepe cream. There's butter cream. But butter cream to me is full of sugar. Mm. Okay. So I don't recommend it to my client. Oh, okay. And the crepe cream is a bit... um. Health-wise, it helps because it's like ice cream. There is no sugar, so it helps. Oh, okay. So but doesn't it melt? If you, if, it depends on how you do it. We have stable method that we use. Okay. So we, all these things, you see, in business, you have to train yours. People don't invest in their business. So the old way of doing things, they still continue. They don't learn new things. Mm -hmm. New things are coming up each and every day. So as, as a business person, you should be able to adapt to the change. New trends are coming. So you should be able to embrace yourself with the changes. Whenever new things come, go and learn. Mm -hmm. Even though you have an idea about it, and go in master classes. Learn from people who are also experienced in your field to adapt to yours. In terms of funding, how did, how did yours work for you? Was it because you had already existing job, so it was easy for you to fund it, or you need to speak to your husband to collect money? Did you go for a loan, <laughs> you know? Okay, so as of the time I started, I didn't be married yet. Oh, yeah. so how did, how did the funding? Because I was working at the airport. At the airport? I yeah, okay, I so you had money from there yeah. to start. It wasn't difficult investing those monies into it? It was, but it was difficult getting a shop. Shop these days are like the price mm -hmm. is crazy, and they don't take like one year, six months, two. they take five years, ten years. And the price is huge. Mm. The price is so most people have business ideas, but even to where to get a shop to start, so because of that, I think pe most people are waiting for a shop. But I felt when I finished learning, it, I realized, oh, I'm good at it. I didn't have a shop, I was going around the price I was sharing. There's no even as at that time, I couldn't afford. Mm. And I spoke to my landlady. So my landlady said, oh, if that's the case, she can give me a, a bare land close to my kitchen. So I went to buy a tent. Because one time we had gone to camp, Legon people, um, 
my church, they, they had moved from having camps at Legon, and my lady pastor was going to buy land at, around the city of Shiloh, um, okay. Pam Pam, there about. Um, it's called the city of Shiloh. Mm -hmm. So we went there for the first time, and she built a tent, like a house. So I took the inspiration from there that if you could have service on a bare land and build it, it means I can also build that tent for a kitchen. So I spoke to my landlady and she agreed. And I bought the tent and uh, as in transformed it into a kitchen. So I was there for like a year. Then I got to be in my apartment that now I'm doing it in the house. Wow. If you come across the young ladies who want to also do something for themselves, what what is always been the challenge they have? Is it the starting? Is it the, I know farming obviously will, will be a problem, but is it because some of them don't know where they are going, what they want to do for themselves? Some of them, I think, fear, fear of failure. Mm. They have the fear, hey, what if, what if I start? And, yes, what if, what if? But I always tell people that you have to, um, fear is part of your normal day life. Sometimes you have to, in, in approaching, if, if you are you're business minded, you should have the mindset of taking calculated risks. Some of them, you have to just try. If you fail, try again. Try till you get it. Mm. Some of them today, they are, um, they are major challenges, they are funding. They don't have the capital. Some people want to get it all before they start. But I always tell people, you don't have to have it all. Now, there are business that people do online that you don't need money to even start a business. Some of these vendors that go to Togo and other countries to bring clothes, shoes, and all that, they have all the pictures. All you have to do is just go to them. They'll give you the pictures. Start creating social media accounts for yourself. Give it a name. Post it. When people order, go there. They will pay you. Go there and buy for them. So you are not using business to even trade this business. So when you do for a while that you think you've got it enough, then you could go for a shop. to start maybe a boutique or whatever that you want to. But people, I think, want to gather everything. want to have everything before they take a step. No, it shouldn't be like that. Start small. <laughs> I'm wondering how you're combining being a wife and a business <laughs> and uh, airport work as well. How do you do it? No space. Or... Yeah, yeah, no time, man. It's, it's very, very stressful. <laughs> it's very, very stressful. Mm. So my, my work is said that it's on a shift base. Okay. So if I go today, tomorrow, I have off days. What do you do at the airport? So I work with the facilities department. Okay. 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 So you are on shift basis. Yes. You so, have... so you could be two days and you have not gone to the airport? Yes. Yes. Oh, so you uh, have to okay. be that's, space that's good then. Yeah. And even days that I have work and I have work, I wake up like two, sometimes three. Do it, put it in the fridge, or sometimes deliver at dawn so then before I go to work. Hey, is, mm. that, is that possible? It's possible. Yeah, I mean, at dawn, you deliver at six, by seven, seven thirty, eight, you're already at the wow. airport, you know. So based on the clients, you can just arrange with the clients. So whenever I have, I, have, I have someone, um, so I've brought in my sister's daughter mm. that I've also trained, so sometimes, she also takes some of the orders on my behalf. Wow. I'm, I'm oh, loving man. the cake, though. She's actually promised, I know has promised me a birthday <laughs> cake. It might not come um, on TV, but I think we'll be cutting it behind <laughs> the scenes. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try and do I think we should organize a party. You say you're going to yeah, organize a party for me. What do you think? Yeah, yeah so Kim just going to organize a party for yeah. me. And then, you know, Anwar is going to give us a castle cake. <laughs> Castle cake. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Is this, is this something you want to do for the longest? Yeah, now I you think... You may even have to, if you may have, you have to stop the airport work. Is this something that you want? That is, if you start to boom it. <laughs> if you start booming. <laughs> so if you get to that point, you're ready to sacrifice the oh, airport yes, work I for know. this? Yeah. If, if you get to a point where I think the demand is high. Wow. If possible. And this really means a lot to you, apart from just giving you some money. I, I think it's something you're very passionate about. It's something about. that I've come to love it. Yeah. Not has become part but of stopping it. the airport job for this is like, it's a, it's a different See, serious. every business and get to a point where you're at the peak of your business, where now the business needs you more. Mm. Yes. Mm. So if you get there. Wow, interesting. And she has plans of putting together a school as well, yeah. you know, to help young ladies who also Especially want to Especially those on the streets. The kids on the streets. Hawkers. Hawkers, yeah. Mm. Interesting. So how much does this cost? This one, 5,000. Huh? <laughs> 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 you're getting part, you know? Yeah, man. Oh, no. But she's doing it for me for free. 5K. <laughs> but she, oh, you're, you're doing it for me for free, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, for free, sir. So my prices so are for that. It depends on what you want and what you want. For free, sir. No, this one wants castle. <laughs> but, no, but she's coming. She's, she's... Castle is more than 5,000. 
Rose. She's doing it for people. <laughs> it's a birthday present. Adwa, it's a birthday present. You're all set, oh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the business. Wait, yeah. I'm angry and thank you. <laughs> oh, what's, what's the maximum a, a cake will cost, like, in terms of money? How much would 10,000, 20,000? For a birthday cake or wedding cake? No, it could be anything. I'm looking for at the highest cake. anybody Be Birthday cake, cake, my prices start from 250. Oh, okay, that's yes. good then. My cupcake, 180. Mm. So if you, even if you don't want a cake, you want a cupcake. I do six pieces for hundreds of so I have prices for everyone. Okay, yes. so can anybody pay 20k for a cake? Yeah. Depending on what the person yeah, wants to do. Yeah, depending. Yes, depending on what. You oh, want. twenty thousand for a cake. It depends on what. That'll be building a studio. Want, or yes, something. some people want something very huge. Yeah, very huge. Yeah, so, depending on what you want. Oh, that's nice. Oh. I think yeah, I, I know what you're doing so well for yourself. Because it pays. I'm not it, excited it about the fact that it pays. Yeah. You know, if people are getting your services for that kind of amount of money and you're making some interest on it and all of that, profit is coming and all that. I mean, it's, it's, it makes sense. And, and with this, there's nothing like pension. You do it for yeah, you And you, you will leave an inheritance for your children. Yeah, yeah. That's good. There's something you want your kids to do? If they show interest, you can yes, you can become a doctor, but you still have a side have, business. Uh, a lawyer, side business. Side business is very necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so they can take it up as yes. So um, whichever field you decide to as a go, I I won't oppose, but have a side business. It helps. You might never know when you would need it, and you can train somebody to even take that up for you. Even though in, we are in an era where people don't trust people, but. We, we can't, you can't do without human beings. Some will betray you. It doesn't mean you should give up. Still continue training people. So that in your, some people make their business revolve only around them. Mm. So whenever they are not there, the business collapses. But it shouldn't be like that. You should be able to train somebody that would also take up the tax. So in your case, you're only two people, you and the, the lady, yeah. your sisters. Uh, how do you guys cope? Is, is it not demanding? Mm -hmm. Have you, the two, just the two of you? I think me, I'm, I'm fast in doing things. So in a day, I can do like six when the demand is there. You can do six there. cakes? Yes, when the demand is there. Wow. And mostly, I guess, birthday cake more than, well, you see wedding cake once in a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so birthday cakes are easier than wedding. Okay. This one takes a longer time. OK, yeah. OK. That's, that's how come it's expensive. OK. It's, it's nice. I see the work that goes in there, and um, you are doing so, so well. We are so proud of you. I mean, Thank from you. somebody who used to sleep on the street for close to 10 years, and where you are today, have you, have you met any of your mates who yes. used to? Yeah, they are, most of them are still selling sugar cane. They're still selling sugar cane? Obviously not those who have been laughing at you, right? No, those who, who are laughing at me were students, my colleagues from uh, school. So they see you, do you see them too as well? Yeah. How do they feel when they see you? Like, how, how do they react? You see, their reaction, their, oh, Ella, no, but you, your conscience you won't, forget. yeah. Mm -hmm. You never forget. Mm -hmm. So those still selling sugar cane, I, I, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know. It's still a business that right? It's still a business. Yeah, I mean, but it's, I mean. It's, it's something you cannot do forever, but, but yeah. they, are, for they me, have no option. It's, it's, it's the positive side that comes with it, because you can be in the street and sell for the rest of your life. But there are also others who are there and they know what they want to achieve. Yeah. Like your, yourself, your, your situation, for example. And so I, I always say that the decision is always in your hands. Yeah. You understand? And looking at your story, there are other people who have even lesser of situations you have been through and they still believe that selling on the street is what they feel they want to do. You get it? So it, it depends on where you want to go and how you want to achieve what you want to achieve. And for you, you got... I mean, right from the onset, school has always been on your heart. You get it. So the streets, Rose, if you want to leave the street, you leave the street. That's true. A lot of people have been in the street and they are not in the street mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's you and your focus and how you want to do this. If you want to be there for the next 50 years, you'll be there. But if you have been very determined that, you know what, I'm not going to be here forever. I'm so because you've met others yeah. who are still there and probably they could have been gone yeah. off the street before you. Yeah, yeah. But you were looking for opportunities at various places where you can change your yeah. fortunes. And I, you made it right, so. I don't know why I can take my, my eyes off your <laughs> video, so. I, I, I see the hard work that you put in there. So you have how many apprentices so far? One. You have one apprentice. Yeah. 
Oh, so who are these ladies who are standing by it? Okay, so they came to do the call. Ah, they were helping okay. me fix it. All right. Okay. So the school, when, when is the school commencing? Because it's a dream. Yes. Um, very soon. I'm looking at maybe by next two, by next two years. By next From two. now to, so it can be either ending of this year, next year, but by next two years, I'm just praying that God will make a way for me. Because mm. opening a school is, is no joke. Yeah. Mm. Into, and Are you a discounted yes. one as well? Yes. So I need a, a lot of even sponsorship mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Because most of the um, street people, if you ask them to pay the full amount, they won't be able to. So some of these people have to support to encourage them to also. And the fact that I was once there and I've been able to come out, I think it will even motivate them to also yeah. want. And I would want to make mine very flexible to the point that if you are selling Monday to Saturday, I give you the option. How many days can you come? If you can come to, you have four days to yourself to go and sell whatever that you're coming to sell. You are going to sell. Come two days, come and get training. So maybe I'll give you a stretch like six months. By six months, you're giving me two days of every week. So like in a, in a month, you're giving me eight days out of it. In six months, you should be able to start something on your own. Wow. Okay. Great stuff. Um, I, I love determined people, you know, who want to just take care of their own life. You know, it's not always that people who have to just and be telling you do this or do that or that. as long as you feel that this is what you want to do and so your story is you know a very interesting story. very inspiring I, I know you're not going to give up and this is something you you're yeah. really passionate about and you want to do it you know and so i i i would just commend you on that Thank you know you. just keep you heard that keep doing it Thank and as always i'm sure we do plenty programs every day <laughs> <laughs> definitely you'll be just getting plenty, a lot of gigs plenty, uh, people watching right now plenty. want to know how they can reach you as well okay so i'm on facebook Inter instagram tiktok as anna west big house okay anna west big house so you can reach me on 0245 82 okay so 0245-82-1919. You know, one thing I'm curious about is you are still Augustina Anwa, even after <laughs> knowing your father. Why didn't you add his name? So, I think around that I was used to the name. So my father even brought it up okay. that we should go and do the changes and add it. I'm like, oh, Belong, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a kid. You're okay with it? Yes, I'm okay with it. Now I, I've, I've come to accept that I'm Augustina Anwa. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what's, what is his surname? Arthur. Arthur, okay. Yes. Okay, so we stick with the Augustina <laughs> Anoa, which is a beautiful name and it has gotten Thank you where you, you, yeah. you are today. Yeah. That's beautiful. And uh, we say congratulations to you for how far you have come because out of determination, you've gotten to where you've gotten to today. Yeah. Yeah. The FGMG said, you know, um, people like you are rare. And so congratulations. But the interesting thing is this. I understand your dad is on the line. Um, hello? Prof, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Prof. Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, that will, it will shock you, but don't worry. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> You'd be surprised to hear, but don't worry. <laughs> are, you, are you on Facebook, Instagram? Yes, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and always the big house. Okay, that's mm. where the, everybody yeah. can find you, apart from calling you yes, please. and all of that. Okay, so that's how you can reach her. It's, it's simple. You know, there are a lot of events going on. If you have any event like that going on, you need to make sure that you contact her, and she will do some very nice cakes for you. I mean, I love what I'm seeing. I want a, I, I, I want a flagstaff cake. Mm -hmm. Like a flagstaff house cake. <laughs> for sugar <laughs> reasons. <laughs> if I can't go there, let me have it. <laughs> if I can't go there, let me have it. <laughs> the, the castle cake. We want the castle cake. <laughs> you know, has promised if, me a castle If they won't let me come there, let me have it. <laughs> I know why you've promised me a castle cake. <laughs> <laughs> I know why see. So since, you since, since this one is a birthday that we are not doing any party. Let me no, I said I'll do party later. So you bring the <laughs> so, party cake. So now let me bring you the whipped cream one. <laughs> then the party will do a very big one. Hey. Yes. Okay, all right. So we'll be expecting a, a big, a bigger cake uh, yeah. during the party. Okay, yeah. that's fine. We'll take it like that. We'll take it like that. So when, when is my whipped cream cake coming? 
Oh, it can even come tomorrow. Hey! Hey, yeah, me, when I'm celebrating my birthday, it's a week long ago. Yo, where is my birthday present, guys? Where is my birthday present? Okay, Joe, where's my birthday present? Uh, let's go to the phone and let me speak to Prof. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> okay, so we have... Um, I, I, yes, you can see. Hello, Prof. Oh, my God! No way! <laughs> oh! Bro, good morning. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? Too? Please unmute, unmute your microphone for me, please. Okay, you have done that already. Oh, okay, my can, can God. Can you speak again and let me see if I can hear you now? Can, hello, Prof. Can you Happy hear me? Happy birthday to Rosalind. Oh, my God. <laughs> Prof. Daniel, that's, that's a surprise. Oh, my God. <laughs> Prof. Daniel, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God, Prophet Daniel, this is, this is, this is, uh, I don't know, uh, why did you guys do this to me? I said I should bring a father out and then I'll bring him from. Prof, good to have you this morning and thanks for the time, man. Rosalind's birthday and we decided that we should just let you in so you can also, you know, wish her well and uh, possibly, you know, she, we, we've been, we've been uh, looking very, very sweet this morning here on the show. Great. So... A blessed birthday to you, Rosalind. Thank you. And let me pray for you. Thank you. I speak in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the hand of God, may the spirit of the Lord, may the strength of the Lord be your portion. Amen. As your days are, so shall your strength be. Amen. May the hand of God order your steps. Amen. May you always be at the right place at the right time. Amen. To your days, may God give you more life. Amen. And to your life, may God give you more years. Amen. No evil shall be for you. Amen. I declare in the name of Jesus that the altar of God will always back you up. Amen. And whatever that you do will be successful. Amen. May you Amen. move forward on everything you do. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you, you so much, Prophet Daniel. Martin Luther King Jr. of blessed memory, he said something. He says, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But whatever you do, keep on moving forward. Thank I want you. to tell you, whatever you are doing, Keep on moving forward. But the Lord is with you. Thank Lord, you. God bless you. We are praying for you. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Bless Amen. Us. Amen. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Prophet much for Daniel. the time, Prof. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said to you, and that's my, go, go clap that's my pastor. Oh, you, oh my God. Right <laughs> that's my pastor. But I mean, we, we, we celebrate you. Um, you've been 25 years for the past five, ten I'm years I'm still now. 25. You're still 25. We're, we like it like that, you know. I'm still 25, and, uh, <laughs> yes. And um, we stick to the 25 till thy kingdom uh, come. How do you think? <laughs> I, I know, I'll you, bomb me. If you, bomb me. Mommy! Don't worry. If you, bomb me. Mommy, <laughs> <laughs> you, bomb me. And, you, know, you have no idea today. Eh? You are going to cause yes. trouble here. I am 25. <laughs> I, I can't even be 25 for five years. <laughs> What's your own? Huh? If you, bomb me. <laughs> I know, how old do I look? 25. Hey! Right? I know, I look 25. Don't be deceived. Right? Or probably younger. <laughs> See, don't be deceived by this. <laughs> I'm 25 yeah. years. <laughs> so, yes, it's a good thing. Anyway, Charlie, thank you so much. I don't know. I yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll my, wish you well. I, I, I know it's going to be the whole on, year. On, 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 uh, on Zoom this morning praying for me. This is, this is more than what uh, anybody could ask for. Thank mm. you. That prayers on your birthday yeah. is, is, very, is, very is more important than even the gifts. And so... I'm very touched. Thank you so much, Prophet Daniel. Thank you, the production team, for doing this. It's so we have the we have the iPhone already. We are waiting for the. You're waiting for the what? Yeah. You're waiting the for other the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We're waiting for the other ones. Uh, no, those who last week promised Benz, we have not seen the Benz yet. <laughs> Don't let us come into your dreams <laughs> and disturb you. Back front, straight front. Uh, bring the pens. Oh, we need it. Uh, yes, the iPhone. You didn't mention the pens. Who brought the iPhone yet? Okay, Bruce, but why you, you not? Thank you all so much. We need to say thank um, you to the person.